Uh, hi, everybody. It's Monday. It's 3.30. Just checking in, giving you a quick um, video on working or starting activity four. And then I uh, wanted to mention a few things on Canvas regarding our week uh, being remote, just so we're on the same page on what is going on day-to-day uh, -day basis. So uh, this first question is asking you for uh, velocity of an object at time t equals one for this table of data. And we got um, time as input. Uh, we have p of t as position as output. And we need an average rate of change. We know average rate of change over a time interval is the change in the outputs over the change difference in the inputs. So if we want um, the velocity at time one, nothing in this table gives us the velocity. All we have are time and position, and we could compute averages average rates of change, average velocities, and come up with an estimate for how fast things are going at one. For example, if we can look at the average velocity, um, well, back to Usain Bolt, if we wanted how fast he was going at meter 50, um, rather than take, I mean, we could estimate with an average velocity over, you know, meter 10 to meter 100, and we could come up with an estimate of how fast he was going um, at meter 50, because it's similar to how fast he was going in average over the whole 10 to 100 meters or 20 to 80 meters or whatever, but the average velocity would be closer to the actual instantaneous velocity at 50 if we looked at a shorter window, so or a smaller window. For example, if we wanted to know how fast he's going at 50 meters, let's find the average velocity from his 49th meter to his 51st meter. Well, that'd be an average, but because the window is so small over the meters, that would be pretty close to his instantaneous velocity at 50. So we're gonna do a similar thing here. If you calculate your, um, let's look at the interval 1.1 to time one. Um, that's this position to this position. So if we did average uh, here, and let's make this smaller. Mm, okay, so if we did um, average velocity over um, time 1.1 to 1, then we would have 1.1 minus 1 is the time change in the bottom. Uh, the position change is 0.2057 to 0.2915. Point, 0 0.2057 to 0.2919. Uh, let's see. That's going to be negative something. So the denominator is 0 0.1. 1.1 1 .1 minus 1 is 0 0.1. Numerator is going to be, uh, let's see, 9 minus 7 is 2. Oh, I can't do that in my head. Um, let's see, 0 0.2919 minus 0 0.2057. 2, 8, 11, uh, 6, 8, 0.862. Um, negative 0 0.0862 is what I believe that would be because um, that would be zero. And then whatever this works out to be, which I'm going to use a calculator and come back. Give me just a second. Okay, yeah, so that is equal to negative 0.862. Uh, the units would be whatever the outputs are, outs over the ends. Uh, those are the units all the time for your average Velocity. Okay, so that was the average velocity over a big time change from 0.1 or 1.1 to 1. Uh, the idea is here to keep doing this calculation. So we did it once there. Now you're going to repeat the calculation. Average velocity over a smaller and smaller time window. Now let's look at 1.01 to 1. That'll be a smaller time interval. And we should get another average rate of change, but it'll be closer to the actual instantaneous velocity. So you're going to compute the average velocity like we just did, then for the smaller window, then for the window from 1.01 to 1, and finally for the window from 1.001 to 1, that time change, and then that's your best estimate given the data we have. Um, please use a calculator for this problem. You don't have to maybe write this, show this one time, and then for the other, other average velocities, use a 
calculator and report your answers. So you show you're doing the work, you're just using a calculator. Okay, keeping going. Um, B also is asking you what would uh, help us get a better estimate? What kind of data would help us get a better estimate? Um, two is asking you the same thing. So it's asking you to just the table looks different and gives you more practice. So uh, here's the function, root of 3x plus 1. We're looking for uh, the slope of a tangent line at a specific position, x is 5. And to do that, calculate the slope of a tangent line. Um, we're looking for the slope of secant lines over the intervals. And the reason why this is the same question as question 1, question 1, we used average velocities to calculate instantaneous velocity at 1. Question 5 is asking you to compute slope of secant lines to find the slope of a tangent line at 5. It's the same stuff. Uh, slope of a secant line through two points is the same as the average velocity through the two points. Instantaneous rate change at a time is the same as the slope of the tangent line at that time, in this case, five. So we have uh, interval windows to calculate average velocities or slopes of secant lines. And again, use a calculator to come up with these slopes of secant lines. Um, and it's the same calculation that we did right up here, just different values. Uh, the third question is asking you to um, take this graph, repeat it here. And so here's our graph. Whoops. Graph looks something like this. And find. the average velocity of the object, find the line whose slope is equal to the average velocity over the time interval two to six. So here's two, here's six, and we just decided average velocity over a particular interval is the slope of that secant line. So um, add a line whose slope is equal to the average velocity of the object. So a point at two, a point at six, um, and my graph is a little off. Let's see, I'm going to fix that. Here we go. There's six. Okay, so if we draw that line, it's the slope of this line. Is equal to the average velocity of our object over the closed time interval two to six. We're connecting two ideas, that the slope of a secant line is the same as the average velocity over that interval. Uh, the rest of that question, and I think the rest of the whole activity is asking you to connect that idea and to sketch some lines. The last is to connect this rate change idea um, with different contexts, such as stock, such as water temperature, and I think that's it. And uh, and asking you about units. And your main takeaway there goes back to the first question, what we were talking about with units. So even if you're not given units, or if you are, the average rate change is always, always has units. Outs. And let's say with uh, units. Outputs over inputs. Those are always your units for the average rate of change. All right, let me switch back to Canvas and talk about a few more things. Okay, here we are. Canvas, a few things. Um, one, there's an announcement regarding Ireland. So 
if you uh, complete this class, then take Calc 2 in summer two, summer, sorry, summer one. So finish our class, take Calc 2 in summer one, which is totally doable, um, and then go to Ireland and take Calc 3. That would be pretty sweet. Um, then previous announcement is this one telling you what to do day to day. So week three, um, several semesters ago, several week three, more information. There we go. Yeah, several years ago, um, Professor Nicholas and I developed uh, and built out online Calc 1 for Minds. So there's an online Calc 1 course. Uh, it doesn't, it's not offered right now. Um, it's usually offered in the summer. But anyways, we have materials for those things. Those are the materials I'm using. So uh, for example, today, you would have clicked through section 2.1 and you can either access it this way or if it doesn't preview, then click the download and download it. But um, you read through this set of notes, just literally read through it, work through the examples um, along with Dr. Nick. And then when you get to something like the YouTube video, watch the YouTube video, work through that example. They're short videos, but um, they're like example problems. And then come back and keep going through the notes. Um, then let me get rid of that. Close. Yep. Then... Um, if you need to join my office hours, join my office hours through the Zoom link. If you wanted uh, that set of notes read through, so you could open this uh, section 2.1, then click the audio for section 2.1. And it's um, it's me speaking as though I were like lecturing, reading through the notes. It's not in a like a mundane, like just reading way, but it's like talking through them as though I was using those notes, presenting them to a class. Um, we did that for several reasons in an online class. Anyways, if you want the audio version, it's there. It just adds different language to the, the written notes here. Then activity four, you can access. I just showed you that a second ago. Work on your mind math labs. Activity three was due today at three um, via turn it in via grade scope. Same thing for activity four, you'll turn into grade scope. Activity five, you'll turn into grade scope. All right, um, that's it. Thanks for watching if you did watch. If you have any questions, reach out. I'll be available tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Um, and then again at 1. Again, tomorrow you're looking at 2.2. If these office hour times don't work for you, please email for some time, and I could Zoom with you at other times throughout the day. All right, y'all take care, and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon.